Welcome to Fonts, Text, and Typography. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to find great fonts and great font combinations we can use in our own work, as well as learn a little bit about the categories of fonts. So knowing this will allow us to improve the text in our own work, as well as using the style of font to better convey our message to our target. So with so many font options, it can be really intimidating, but we're going to walk through some steps and guidelines so you'll feel confident in choosing great fonts. So choosing a font or typeface. To help us with this, we'll first learn some terminology around fonts. And uh, just very quickly, just to be technically accurate with the terms, a typeface refers to a family or appearance, let's say like Arial. Arial is a typeface. A font is an application of that typeface, such as when you're using Arial Bold or Arial Regular. So I use the font Arial Bold, it's from the typeface Arial. However, uh, this all tends to be a bit pedantic. It's interesting to know, but if you're just saying font, you're fine. I'll mostly just refer to font through this lesson. So now some more useful terminology to know is font categories. So we're looking at serif, sans serif, script or handwriting and display. This is useful to us because these font categories have certain characteristics and we can use these characteristics to design for our target and help get our message across. So by knowing these categories and their characteristics, we can start to narrow down the fonts that we're searching for. So the first two, serif versus sans serif. Now serif refers to the little feet you see at the bottom or tops of some letters. So fonts that contain them are called serif and fonts that do not are called sans serif. So sans meaning without. So serif with the feet, for instance, can be seen as more formal, elegant, or sophisticated, perhaps seen as established and classic. Sans serif, so the ones without the feet, can be seen as more modern, clean, and friendly, and to the point. So you'll notice a lot of new startup companies tend to go with sans serif for this very reason. Now, script or handwriting fonts are meant to mimic, unsurprisingly, <laughs> human handwriting. Uh, there's quite the variation here. So you can see long, beautiful strokes with curls, like almost like calligraphy, or quick chicken scratch, kind of like uh, my own handwriting. The effect the font will deliver will depend on that spectrum. So on the one side, we have elegant, classy, luxurious. But that can go all the way across to fun, lighthearted, and creative even personalized if you're mimicking handwriting a note to somebody. Display can sometimes bleed into handwriting, but it tends to denote fonts that are bold, interesting, or unique. This can include anything from titles you see on a movie poster to fonts that look like they're just carved into a surface. Accordingly, there's no one set of attributes, but at very least we can say this kind of font is about making a statement or just being very creative. So if you're looking to do something a bit more fun or funky, perhaps writing something across a blue sky, display fonts are your go-to. So quick summary of the categories, it's about knowing what feelings a font category will give off. We can think about the message that we wanna get across in our audience and decide what type of font would likely serve that best. Do we wanna be serious and sophisticated? So perhaps we try and find a serif font. Or do we want to be creative and approachable? A, a script font might be best. Before we get into the actual search though, let's walk through two simple rules that'll help no matter what fonts you choose. Use only one or two fonts, very straightforward. It's jarring in a design to have multiple different fonts competing. So for simplicity and ensuring everything works nicely together, only use one or two fonts. Now, if you do feel like your design would be better served with two fonts, you'll also want to look into rule number two, ensure that the two fonts are noticeably different. So if we're gonna bother with more than one, we want each to stand out and to help us deliver our message. So for instance, we could have our titles be in a nice, long, beautiful script font to give them a certain punch and prominence. And then all the body text could instead just be in a plain, easy to read serif font. So if we're going to use two, we ensure that they clearly and meaningfully stand out from one another. So obviously these are titles and this is the body text. So with that understood, let's find that font and we get into a key tenet of design, inspiration. 
There are a ton of resources online where great designers have picked through all the latest fonts available and put together the best pairings for you. You may not be comfortable trying to pair fonts that work well together, but you don't need to be. There are so many designers out there putting out all the font pairs you'd ever need. We can search and find a bunch of examples we like, compare the effect that they're having to the desired effect that we want to have. Now, as opposed to simply searching for font combinations though, one tweak to make when searching is to find font pairings based on Google Fonts. So Google Fonts are entirely free fonts that you can download and use. Even better, as a side note, these fonts can be embedded and used on websites as well. So if you found something perfect, you can use it all the way from your business card to your presentation to your website online. But I digress. When we're searching for great font pairings, Limiting it to Google Fonts ensures that we can download and use them for ourselves for free. So let's bring up a Google search here and see what I mean. So here in Google, we give a quick search for great Google font pairs, and immediately we see tons and tons of results, 175 million of them in fact. So even called up for attention here, we're looking at Meriwether and Montserrat, Josephine Sanz and Amatik, PT Sands and PT Sands Narrow, so this is a great looking website and blog for that. Here we have another article, top 10 beautiful font combinations in 2018. 15 great Google font combinations for your next design project, so on and so on. Quick look at this blog here. Scroll here. So Oswald E.B. Garamond. Get an example of how that looks for us. Open Sans, Open Sans Condensed. Railway Roboto Slab, and on and on and on. So many sites, so many curations, so many great font pairings for us to consider. So a small tweak to a Google search result results in us finding amazing font combinations all for free for download. Let's talk about two sites in particular that are wonderful for helping you find great fonts. First up, we have Font Pair. So this site has done all the hard work for you. It's gone out and found Google fonts that work great together and categorized them for your searching, including featured and popular combinations, as well as different category mix-ups like serif, sans serif, display, serif, etc. What's especially great is that they give you examples of the fonts in use, allowing you to edit the text and see it with your own copy in action. And they include direct download links for any of the fonts you decide to use for the project. Going a bit more technical, FontJoy uses formulas and machine learning to match fonts together that look great. You can add in your own text to get a feel for how the font would look like in your project, lock in a font to find pairs that will work just for that one, and continue to generate pairs until you find exactly what you're looking for. Now this site always suggests three fonts at a time, going against our two font rule, but if you take the header and the body fonts, you'll be all set. But let's go through this process now. Let's find a font pair from one of these sites, download it, and then apply it into our presentation. So I'll come over here to Font Pair, where they have a lot of great examples right off the bat. Laura Merriweather, Rosaba Libre, and Open Sans. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing some of these, but <laughs> they certainly look wonderful. Libre, Baskerville, and Source Sans Pro. You know, I want to have a bit of a bolder title and a kind of a plainer body text, so I'm going to sort by display and sans serif. Let's see, so we have Real Fat Face, Android Sons, Josephine Sons. Let's see. So some more kind of scratchy ones, a little bit handwritten, then the body text looks straight. Some really bold, thick fonts and flat. A really curvy one with really nice embellishments on each of the letters. That's kind of nice. Um, and here's one that I like. So Lobster and Ar Arimo. Lobster and Arimo. Let's go ahead and download these and install it. So open up these in two tabs and let's download them one by one. And we head on over to Google Fonts. Now downloading it I find is not the most obvious in the world, but it's not too difficult either. So what you wanna do when you get to the font you wanna download, you come over here to the top right and you see select this font. We'll go ahead and click on that. Now as soon as you click on it, you're gonna notice this box shows up in the bottom right. So when you click on that box, you get all of this loading up. Now these are some of the coding pieces for your website if you want to include it there, but that's a, a different lesson for a different time. Instead, we want to download this and install it for our own use, and that'll be done through this button 
here in the top right. So go ahead and click on that. And it is downloading. Great. Now let's go ahead and grab the second one that font pair suggested, a Remo. Same thing. So top right, select this font. Shows up in the bottom right. Extend that. And again, on the top right, we see this little download icon. Click it. And it is downloaded. Okay, so here we have the two of them. They get downloaded in a zip format. So I'll just go ahead and unzip them here. And for wonderful, let's go ahead and click into Lobster. So here's the font. Uh, there's now if you ha are working with a Mac as opposed to Windows, like I'm on here, it'll vary slightly, but it's very much the same. So for when you're installing a single font, it's fairly easy. You just double click. It'll come up. Um, a similar window will come up in Mac and you just hit install. And this font is now on our system. So let's head back and get into the other one, our Arimo. Now you notice there's a couple here. On a Mac, what you want to do if you want to install multiple at the same time is you want to locate the font folder on your system and then just drag the fonts directly into the font folder. That's not required. You can simply, you can absolutely just double click them one by one, but just a quick trip, tip, just a quick tip. In my case, I can grab just all of them here, select them all, right click, and then hit install. And there we go. They're all installed. Let's hop over to our presentation and apply it. Here we are in the presentation. Let's go ahead and use those fonts. Uh, quick note, you might have to restart whatever program you're using if it's open when you install the font. So if you install it and it doesn't show up, don't worry, just restart the program. Now let's go ahead and add some text to add it to. So we'll say design for non-designers. Subtitle, we are now confident in finding nice fonts. Great, now our title, the site was lobster so let's go ahead and add that in beautiful swerving display font could almost be called a script font and the base one was a remo just a slight variation on Arial, but slightly more refined and there we have it we have a beautiful font combination ready to go that wraps it up for this lesson we learned about font categories and how each have certain characteristics we can use to relay a feeling or a message. We learned that we don't need to stress if we're not comfortable picking fonts that work well because the internet is full of beautiful examples for us to be inspired by. We learned about using Google Fonts as a free resource, and we walked through installing and applying the fonts in our own work. In the second part of this lesson, we're going to learn how to take these fonts and push things further in our design, as well as some guidelines that we can use in any of our work that includes text. We'll see you there.